Aliens Explored is a weekly podcast exploring famous and obscure cases of UFO sightings, alien abductions and other strange events from both a believing and a sceptical perspective whilst keeping an open mind. I'm Stu Jackson, a professional actor and amateur ufologist with a particular interest in the crop circle phenomenon. I'll be debating that otherworldly visitations are real. The truth is out there. And I'm Neil Kelly. I'm a professional actor as well and used to work for the military as an intelligence analyst. I'll be arguing from a more doubtful point of view. I mean, it's all a bit far-fetched, isn't it? On the 27th of December 2020, the then President of the United States, Donald Trump, signed a coronavirus relief and government funding bill into law. Part of this bill included a 180-day countdown for US intelligence agencies to tell Congress what they know about UFOs. Join myself and Neil as we try to determine what on earth coronavirus has to do with UFOs and what this may signify moving forward here on Aliens Explored. Hello listeners and welcome back to Aliens Explored, your weekly look at the skies above us and those uh, unidentified aerial objects and and so on. I'm your host, uh, one of your hosts, Neil Kelly. (laughs) You've done it again. I'm I'm your other host, Stu Jackson. (laughs) I've you got keep calling yourself that you're yeah. trying to, Sorry, you you're give trying me, to take me, over this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Welcome to me. the Neil um, Kelly Show. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> my, my guest today. <laughs> As ever. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, yeah, um, no, it's interesting you open that with saying, you know, where we look at the skies. Because we're not looking at the skies this week. It's a little bit different, isn't it, Neil? It, it is uh, very different. We're, we're looking at all the evidence of people having looked at the skies in the past. Well, we're looking basically at the future. Um, so we're speculating <laughs> and the future, and the present, in yes. this episode. Um, yeah. So we're, this, we're, we're, this we're speculating at, at the future about what they'll release, about what they had in the past. If that makes and what sense. perhaps they won't release. And what they, and what they might not release because they, they, these, these spooks aren't to be trusted, are they? Indeed. Not in any movie I've ever seen, anyway. Yes. Um, so, yeah, this is the um, the attachment to the COVID relief fund that uh, Donald Trump signed back in on the 27th of December uh, 2020 uh, when he signed a, a funding bill um, giving uh, $2.3 trillion of coronavirus relief and government funding um, um there's this attachment isn't there? there there's a clause in there which begins a 180 day countdown to disclosing everything they've ever ever recorded about um, ufos yes they being um the pentagon uh and specifically uh, they've asked for the office of naval intelligence um, all about unidentified aerial phenomena. Yes. Uh, yeah, and also the FBI. Because um, the, the Naval Intelligence do have um, a UAP task force, specifically, mm. uh, kind of a, a government department, deliberately looking at what we call UFOs, um, but UAPs is becoming the uh, kind of the official title. Unidentified aerial phenomena, which I suppose is more of a, a catch-all. It could include um, hostile terrestrial or hostile craft of a ter- or unknown craft of a terrestrial origin. Well, it, it could, it could. In- so could uh, UFO. <laughs> so could UFO. Um, it could also include natural phenomena, which makes it look like there's something in the sky. It could. Um, it could include items that are perhaps falling to Earth or being pulled in by yeah. the gravity, well, which uh, you couldn't really describe as flying. No, but I mean, if you work so, yeah. in, 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 I think in any branch of the armed services, if you're involved in air defence, and an awful lot of money is put into air defence, um, then mm-hmm. yeah, you are very interested in um, unidentified aerial phenomena or, or unidentified yeah any any aircraft which is not known. 
is presumed to be hostile. In fact, as we found out during the was it the first or the second Gulf War, as um, a couple of British RAF fighter pilots or bomber pilots found out to their cost, um, America has automated systems which will, um, if their radar, if, if if their radar picks up an object which isn't doesn't display the right send the right signal back. Mm. They, they have identifiers on their craft, so their, their radar will pick them up and know that it's a friendly craft. If you're not displaying that, that kind of beacon to their radar, it will automatically launch a missile at you, and that's, that's what happened, and people lost their lives over that blue-on-blue blue fire. So, so yes. Mm. So you, you become yeah. a UAP. Suddenly, a, a friendly aircraft becomes a UAP because it's not displaying the right radar beacon. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm digressing again. <laughs> you are yeah, a little, yeah. um, but that's what we do on this show. <laughs> we do, yeah, um, yeah. But UAP. So I can, I can understand why UAPs are of particular interest um, to um, to the Pentagon, to the, mm. the armed forces in general. And there are um, a number but, of things they've seen that said, "Well, we just don't know what it is." Exactly. Which. which and, uh, which, that's fair enough. Which is the basis of this show, isn't it? This is... Well, e- even even I, as a devout um, ufologist, I'm not mm. going to jump to the automatic conclusion. Well, just because we haven't identified it makes it otherworldly. Mm. Knowing what objects are unidentified gives us the opportunity mm. to look into them more deeply and, and perform our own analysis. You know, you've then got the collective wisdom of society, which has got to be good, right? It's um, got to be good, but let's let's rewind a little bit. Um, I think we've got a, a bit ahead of ourselves. Why was this included in the COVID nineteen relief bill? Did someone just take the opportunity to think this is a massive bit of paperwork going through? This is my chance. I'll just slip this in and see if anyone a, notices. I I think that's a, that's a brilliant question. Um, I mean, what on earth has it got to do with COVID relief? Yeah, or coronavirus relief. Um, absolutely nothing whatsoever is is the obvious answer unless of course um as some people have speculated uh coronavirus has come from an extraterrestrial source mm. it's a little bit conspiracy theory but you know it's no i've been i've been reading the the andromeda strain michael crichton's 1967 oh. book about um yes a, a, a quest for um pathogens high in our orbit that could be weaponized against an enemy and it of course what could possibly go wrong with that <laughs> yeah <laughs> indeed um yeah and it well i mean that might be a whole other episode right there mm. uh but yeah but aside from that that's really in in terms of speculation the only relation i can make between coronavirus and unidentified aerial phenomena and and this request for a report but okay so as a as a as a slight aside to that though my understanding of american politics is very very limited um mm. i mean I'm, we're not american for a start yes probably, probably some of uh, our listeners could, could, could clue us in put us put us right on this indeed but i and and this does come from watching movies and and TV programs. So I apologise, listeners, if this is horrendously wrong. But as I understand it, it's not that uncommon for a bill to have riders attached to them that are completely unrelated anyway. Well, what it's like, I... okay, you want to put this bill through, fine. But you've also got to put this other thing as well. Otherwise, I won't. To go otherwise, I won't support it. That that sort of. It, what they call in, horse in, trading, um, and they do it on the West Wing all the time, don't they? The, 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 I the don't watch the West stuff. Wing, but right, I'm it's a, it's glad a, that's backed up. <laughs> right, with that. yes, um, it is. Uh, it, well, all sorts of sense are saying, "Well, I'm, I'll only support." You know, they said we can't get this bill through unless we have so and so support, and he's saying, "Well, I won't support it." However, oh, I might be prepared to consider supporting it if you do this for me. If you, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. That's how politics works. So, was is that what it was that someone said? I'll only sign it. I'll only sign it off if we agree to this. If we agree to release all the information we've ever gathered about unidentified aerial objects. Well, indeed. Now, I'm going to cast your mind back to uh, a, a few episodes ago. Uh, mm. We discussed um, Haya Meshed, yes. uh, who 
was the um, uh, he he was the head of space Oper- director of space operations for the Israeli government. Um, I'm trying to remember his actual job title, but anyway, high he, he had he um, had various, didn't he? I mean, he was um, he was a was he a general? He, he was a military he was, man, yes, but he, but he yeah, also became yeah. a top scientist. Yeah, uh, well, I think he was a scientist first, but yeah, he yeah. ended up director of, yeah. uh, of, of aeronautical. Mm. Anyway, um, the point is, he's claimed, you know, that yes, the governments have known all about this, and Trump in particular, he cited as an example of a president who knew all about the UFO, wanted to release the information, mm. but was stopped. Now, okay, Trump, uh, as of... In fact, the, the day we're, we're recording this, listeners, a little bit behind the scenes, on the 20th of January. Now, mm. that's quite a, a momentous, significant day for you in America. Um, mm. And I'm hoping at this point that all goes smoothly for the transition. Um but obviously, oh. Trump at this point, when it, when uh, Haim Eshed is talking about this, knows he's kind of... Well, sorry, Trump, when he's talking about releasing this relief fund and signing this bill, he knows he's on the way out at this point. Mm. Doesn't that strike you as a kind of Trump-esque thing to do? To say, well, okay, you stopped me from releasing this information, so, you know, screw you guys. Um, you want this money? Fine. You've got to do this thing that I wasn't allowed to do. But he he didn't make it. He, he maybe he does. I've never heard him say anything about UFOs, and I've never heard him. He might have said it, but I didn't. You know, I've watched him fairly closely, um, and he he doesn't do anything without without mentioning it, does he? I mean, he doesn't have a thought that doesn't come out of his mouth. I don't know. I think um, or, or gets tweeted. He, he, he would have tweeted it that yeah, yeah. Today, you know, Americans well, will finally know he, the truth about UFOs thanks to me. He he wouldn't now. Um, no, but at the time <laughs> this happened, he still had that facility available to him, didn't he? And he, he didn't um, he didn't use it. So, well, whatever know. whatever your opinion of, I mean, he's not a completely stupid person, um, and saying it at the time would not have been the time to do it because you'd want this to slip in under the radar. And in fact, this this clause is really well buried mm. in amongst all the other um, information about you know coronavirus and how the money should be spent and what have you. So it is quite buried. And mm. if you want to get something through sneakily, well, you're not going to shout about it because that would that would get it stopped. Yeah, how, how big is this bill? How much, how much of a read is it? Do we know? Uh, it is. Oh, it's. I'm sure I read somewhere a uh, five hundred odd pages. I mean, when you think. Uh, oh, sorry, five thousand five hundred ninety three pages. And and how long did people have to? I mean, this would have gone through as a matter of urgency, wouldn't it? it given absolutely the, dealing with a, a national emergency, people are dying. Um, yeah, we need to get this through fast. Can you just have a quick skim over these 5,500 pages and uh, and put your monocle at the bottom and we'll get this money? And we'll think, OK, sign here to get the money and, and you know, worry about everything else later. So that's a perfect bill to hide things. I mean, it, politicians don't read all these things. I mean, they'll read the bit that they're interested in, but they won't yeah. read all the things that they're concerned about. But they won't even... I mean, Boris Johnson only the other day admitted that he hadn't even read the Brexit deal that he negotiated. That there are oh, things that's, in... that's not the first time Boris has done something no, like that. But I mean and, he is um, he is notoriously Andrew lazy. Andrew Mark caught him out yeah, with I mean, one. Um, yeah. Yeah. He he is notoriously lazy, as are members of his government. Um Dominic Rabb went to Ireland to talk about the um, the Irish border or the or the English border in, in Ireland and mm. showed such crass ignorance he eventually had to admit he hadn't read the Good Friday Agreement, which runs to all of nine pages. So, yeah, he could have read that on the plane yeah. on the way over, but he didn't. I mean, so, I mean yeah, and the Good so Friday Agreement is so this fundamentally stuff. important. <laughs> it's, yeah, that's, it, it that's is, disgraceful. Yeah. In, in civilian life, that would be a sackable offence, I think. 
Absolutely, yeah. So anyway, we got this massive bill and somewhere hidden in it is something that doesn't seem at all pertinent to that bill, um, but no. possibly could have been included as a deal. There could have been a, a, a senator who has a particular interest in this kind of thing and has been been um, been lobbying for years to get this information out there. It could be, or it could be Trump himself. I mean, that's my theory, is it is Trump himself um, kind of doing his sort of petulant thing of, well, you stop me from saying this, so I'm going to make you say, you know, I'm going to make you say it instead. Um, that mm. that strikes me as very much his mo. Mm. Um, in my in my opinion, um, that is. Uh, but yeah, uh, so that that's my theory as to why why this was included. Um, mm. Is it's associated with the whole, you know, what I mentioned said. Uh, which is that Trump does know all about this and just was prevented from saying it. Mm. It's a little bit down the rabbit hole, but there you go. Maybe. Um, or it could be the completely opposite. Trump didn't want it le- leaked out and someone saw an opportunity to slip it in knowing that he's not going to read this. It could have been the other <laughs> way around. You know? just as, we're, we're, we're in total speculation territory here, listeners. Oh, that's it. Is, is that your speculation then, that it's the other way around? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I don't think it was Donald Trump. I think it would be someone who had an interest and wanted that information out there and um, okay. yeah, just had the opportunity to slip it in, had a negotiating lever. And, you know, and it's quite possible that the person who said, OK, we'll put it in the bill um, and hopefully, or maybe no one will notice it. Maybe <laughs> maybe they'll just keep quiet about it and uh, you know we won't have to won't have to act on it. I mean there's also there must be also with, with when you're talking about documents of five and a half thousand pages, there must be an awful lot in there that just never happens. It's uh, there's just too much. Could well be. Well that actually leads very nicely on to the next thing I wanted us to discuss. Um so we looking ahead at what we can hope to be released or what we can expect to be released. We know we know that the deadline is the Friday the twenty fifth of June uh, this year, twenty twenty one. The twenty fifth, did you say? Twenty fifth of June 25th is of the one hundred and eighty days deadline. Now, because it's a Friday, and of course this podcast comes out on a Friday, um, we're hoping, dear listener, um, not going to make any promises, but we are hoping to do a live stream about this very subject on the twenty fifth itself. Hopefully, saying, "Look at all this information that's come out, and isn't it amazing?" Mm. And uh, we now bow to our alien overlords, um, <laughs> but. Who knows what we'll be saying by then, um, or we will be saying. So where is it then? Um, oh. But we're we're hoping to do a live show. It's very difficult for us to commit that far in advance because we're both very busy actors. Um, well, less busy <laughs> this last we? year, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, but it is hard for us to commit. But that's what we're hoping to do at this point. So uh, make sure you're listening to all the episodes mm. in between, of course. And we could also uh, be discuss- it just as likely be discussing what excuse they came up with this time for not releasing it. Yeah. Well, that that's that's the thing. So what can we expect mm. for them to be saying? Um, I know. So in this particular, well, let's look at first what it is specifically that's been asked for. Um, so they've asked for an unclassified report on the UAP phenomenon Mm. Uh, presumably a classified report already exists and they're just asking for it to be declassified well no they would ask for a declassified so unclassified is different to declassified isn't it and and as a military intelligence you unclassified just means it hasn't got any any classification attached to it um but declassified means you've actually taken something that's secret or whatever and decided this is no longer secret this can this can go into open uh, uh, this can this, this can become public knowledge um quite often it will be well as long as you take this bit out and this bit out and this bit out then the rest of it can can go out but you can't you know these names have to be removed or what have you so redacted information. It'll Does be redacted, that... but it'll be but it'll then be rendered unclassified. Okay. Um so does that 
does that render this release of information? Does, does it take its teeth away? Um, if, if they've been, if they're obliged to release everything they currently hold, then what they're being told to do, in my understanding of it, is that all this stuff you've got that you've classified secret or top secret, you've got to declassify it um, and, and well, put it out in the public forum. Well, that's, that's not what it's asking for. It's not asking for all the information. They're asking for an unclassified report. Right. That's different. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so are we now? So let's let's say there's a hypothetical situation. Let's say um, that a UFO comes down, abducts a person, experiments on them, puts them back, um, and then the government does an investigation. Mm. And they investigate and they say, well, okay, they speak to witnesses who see something in the sky. Um, but they don't really know what it is. And then they examine the person who's been abducted and they find find actual evidence. They say they find um, implants, you know, technological implants that are way beyond our capability mm. um, or, or something like that. Part of that report, part of that, uh, those files will be unclassified. It'll be, mm. yeah, we spoke to these witnesses, they saw something, but they don't know what it is. Those that would be unclassified. The classified part would be, and we found this evidence. Mm. Um, so asking for an unclassified report, if you on that one hypothetical mm. situation, would be, yes, yeah, some people saw something. They don't know what it was. Yeah. I, I didn't think that was all. I thought that was already out. That sort of information, reports, and what people have seen and what's been reported, and you know this. But but what well, unclassified information is available under a freedom of information request. Hmm. Um, but obviously, classified information isn't. There is allegedly. I think it's a thirty-year. Is it a thirty-year? Um, statute of limitations on these things that any classified information has to be released after 30 years i mean that's how we know about project blue book now other whether they do actually release everything is a whole other matter i, I mean it might be i mean some things certainly in britain they, they have much longer periods things are still classified mm. under the 100 years rule and even after 100 years they might say well we still don't want this information out Exactly, yeah. Just because they say they're releasing yeah. everything doesn't mean that they are. And, and releasing information about um, unidentified aerial phenomena, um, that's going to prompt people in the Air Force or the Navy to say, well, we, we tracked this thing in the sky. Um, if we release this information, we're, we're um, releasing information about our highly classified um, air defence technology. We don't want that information. If, if we release what, the, what information we've got, it will show how we got it basically you can't reveal the information without revealing the source and yeah we, we don't want to release that information or so we, they're it, not going to release information that gives away technical that, technological secrets that that um would threaten the nation that would present a security breach so yeah that, so that that raises massive questions about how useful all this is going to be anyway then. Mm. You know, I mean, I know the, the UFO community is very, very excited. And it, indeed, um, getting a report from the Pentagon about the UAP phenomenon is a big deal. You know, let's not, mm. let's not make this less than what it is. Um, but it's not a release of all information. It's not the declassification of top secret stuff. It's not suddenly, you know, they're going to ch turf out all the aliens from Area 51 and, <clears throat> you know, make them homeless or yeah. anything. <laughs> um, you know. Maybe that's it. Maybe they've been served with their eviction order. It's 180 days. <laughs> yeah. You've got to find a new planet to live on. There you go. Uh, maybe that's what you it's all know. about. Now, now the, but, a lot of these agencies have already released lots of information haven't they and uh, under under freedom of yes. information requests um particularly to um, the black vault which has been referred to 
in many um there was there was a recent uh, massive release of of information yes as you say under the uh, release of information act um and we are actually going to be talking about that in a couple of weeks time mm. and it's interesting you mentioned that because it is being conflated at the moment quite a lot with this mm. because it happened shortly after or or around the time they said oh yeah we're going to like you've got 180 days to give us this report mm. and then it, it just it was pure coincidence um the cia happened to release all this information to the black although they were really shitty in the way that they've yeah. done it but that's oh we're, we're going to be talking about that in a couple of absolutely weeks. I don't want yeah us to go down mean, that if, digression no but it, just it, yet <laughs> needless to say they they have released i mean if you look at the black vault the black and um, they, they've released um millions of pages um they, they, they've released information but with very very ill grace They've released it in a format oh, yeah. that's very, very difficult to, to search through, very, very difficult to catalogue. Here, it's just a, a massive, it's a truckload of paper, basically. There you they go. They literally delivered it in paper form. Yeah. They've met their legal requirements, but it is really, really shitty the way they've done it. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. But like I said, we will be discussing that. Um, so, do you know what? I've, I mean, it's time, really, that we... Um, <sighs> We need to summarise our thoughts then. Uh, well, normally we'd summarise on a story that's happened and say, <laughs> well, you know, do you believe, don't you believe? Uh, but this is a little bit of a different uh, summary. So we, we I mean, we've it's effectively summarised why we think this was attached hmm. to a COVID bill in the first place. Um speculated yeah. yes <laughs> it, it, well yeah, yeah we I, I mean we we agree it was it was snuck in it was um kind of under the radar mm. um and i think that's pretty obvious from the fact it was buried yeah. so deep yes um as a clause um but in terms of what we can expect uh, i mean i yeah i'm i i'm hopeful I think I can say that. Um, I'll be interested to read the report on UAPs. But the fact it's unclassified information, mm. I don't think we're going to see anything extraordinary. I don't think we're going to see any massive revelations uh, from the government. Um, although, you know, I'm firmly of the belief that the government is keeping a lot of stuff about otherworldly and extraterrestrial visitation mm. uh, secret. I don't think we're going to see it revealed suddenly in this. Um, and it, you know, in, yeah. in fact, I think the information's I, there, just not coming out. I think what they release, it, albeit very limited, I think it will just provoke more speculation. So, oh right, there's there's lots of stuff they're obviously not saying. They're obviously going to a great deal of trouble not to say. Um, yeah, we'll just be speculating more and more, won't we? It's, it'll be it'll be fodder for us conspiracy theorists. <laughs> You'd think it'll raise more questions. I, I think yeah, what, than yeah it that, that's that's what I was trying to get to in my roundabout way that what they what they release <laughs> will will raise more questions than it does answer. Yeah. Okay. Well, we will have to see. And like I say, twenty fifth of June is the date to put in your diaries. Twenty twenty one. Obviously. Um, but in the meantime, do let us know what you think. Uh, do let us know what you expect to see from this report in particular. Do you think we've got it wrong and that the government will come completely clean on the aliens that they've got stored um, and alien bases around the world and what have you? Um, or are they going to come completely clean and say, no, nope, we've fabricated a load of stuff and here it is. Um, yeah. That'd be interesting. Yes. That would be quite interesting to see, in fact, as I'm mm. saying this. Um, but either way, let us know what you think by Twitter or Facebook. You can search us. Uh, by searching Aliens Explored. And of course, you can visit us on aliensexplored.com. And in fact, before we go, um, I'm going to make a request to you, dear listener. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, and we, and we hope you have, um, please do leave us a review. Uh, drop us some stars, 
write a, a quick review saying what you think about us. That will help other people to find this podcast. That's how podcasting works, apparently. Uh, mm. The more reviews we get, the more people will find us and the more we can spread the word and have the discussion. Um, so that's it from me. Uh, don't forget to join us next time when we will be discussing... The strange sounds coming from... Uh, I'm going all yeah, dramatic hey, You are. What's happened to your voice? You've got, so, someone's got a Shakespeare I'm, script in front of you. I'm going into a 1950s B movie. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, it might as well be from a, a 1950s B movie. There don't, are strange don't like 1950s sounds B movies. I love 1950s coming. B movies. <laughs> don't we all? Forbidden mm. Planet remains one of my favourite movies. Um, yeah, but there are strange sounds coming from the Mariana Trench, uh, and they certainly sound very otherworldly. Um, so we'll be discussing that next time. Do join to us it. for that. Yeah. So that's it from me. And that's it from me. And in the meantime, keep watching those government bills and the skies. Take care. <laughs> See you soon. Here's you'll hear from us soon. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>